guys, what's going on? It's your boy. We are back with some X Men ninety seven episode season one episode nine. Guys, I cannot tell you guys how y'all thought episode five broke me. It did. This episode, it didn't break me. But what happened? I. It was hinted that it was gonna happen. It was hinted. And it did. It happened. I mean, oh my gosh. Guys, if you do not know what I'm talking about, if you guys are not avid readers of the comics, back in the early 90s, this episode was made from this. Fatal Attractions. And y'all can see where y'all can see where that was going. So, oh my gosh, you guys. I cannot even believe. And see, when I was watching X-Men long years ago, this is what I wanted was them to adapt the comics to the and uh, to the show. You know, we know they can't do the whole entire, you know, uh, Fatal Attraction um, saga because it spanned over, I think it was four comics, X-Force, X-Factor, Uncanny X-Men, and X-Men. So... They couldn't do it all like, you know, they couldn't um, do the whole thing. So they just took pieces. Not only did they take pieces from uh, Fatal Attractions, the whole Zero, uh, zero uh, Operation Zero Tolerance, they took that, well, Zero Operation Zero Tolerance came after uh, Fatal Attractions. But they um, combined it, which I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't expect for Bastion to be coming in. No, I wasn't even expecting for them to bring him in. But I'm glad because I got tired of seeing Apocalypse. I got tired of seeing Sinister. Not even, let's not even talk about Sinister as his ass was in the episode. <laughs> he was definitely in the episode, but let's go ahead and get started. So we start off where uh, we see, um, I think it was Professor, no, Magneto is looking over Genosha. Um, donning his old, you know, um, war outfit. We see Bastion carrying his mother, and we see Professor getting up out of the bed, you know, looking at the mansion of, you know, the destruction that, you know, I mean, he shouldn't even, uh, I mean, come on, Professor, I mean, to be honest, he should be used to the mansion looking like that, because... In the comics, it always got destroyed. In the anime, it... Uh, yeah, this earring, I tell y'all the truth. <laughs> anyway, um, I gotta get these things cut off. I'm, uh, they used to be bigger than this, but I gotta get them cut off. But anyway... Uh, what was I gonna... Oh, so... Professor should be used to the mansion looking the way it is, because it that's what always happens. In the come in um in one of the comics, it was totally destroyed. I mean, he had to re rebuild the whole entire mansion. So, Bastion, uh, I guess his mom has died. Um, you know, because Magneto turns off all the elect, you know, um, electricity and you know, um, turns off all um machines. So. And Bastion can't even, you know, hear the, he can't even hear the machines because he was like, Mom, it's finally quiet. So, it was like, okay, cool. So, I'm like, so his powers have been neutralized, basically. I was wrong. But we get to Xavier and uh, Cyclops having their, you know, uh, bitter spat. Cyclops is upset because... Why wouldn't Charles entrust the, you know, school and the X-Men to him, but yet he had to entrust it to Magneto? Charles was like, the reason why I, you know, chose to give the X-Men and the mansion to him is because I, you know, wanted him to see a better future and not, you know, go down the path that he's been going down. I could get that. Cyclops is, you know... Charles wanted Gene and Scott to go somewhere and live their lives. He wanted them to, you know, um, he didn't want them to be at the school no more because he said they long since graduated. 
And, you know, Cyclops made a good point. Like, even if we was to leave, I'm always going to be drawn back here because I would still be fighting Sinister, Apocalypse, Magneto. They still going to draw us back here. So Scott and Charles said the same thing. He said, I tried, you know, when, you know, when I went to the Shi'ar, I tried, but, you know, I'm back here as well. He's uh, extending his hand out to Scott. Scott just walked off. I was just like, wow. So we get my girl Rogue. She finally wakes up. I mean, Trask must have had to hit her hard because for her to be out like that, wow. I mean, Rogue usually never gets knocked out like that. This is the first time I've ever seen her being knocked unconscious. And that takes a lot. That takes a lot for that to happen. And Kurt is in there on the uh, in the chair, wait, you know, uh, waiting for her to wake up. She wakes up. She asked him about Trask, and, you know, he said he survived. And she was like, so what about Remy? Because, remember, she's thinking all this is a dream. And he was like, no, Gambit didn't make it. So, um, we get we get a whole thing with uh, Cyclops. Well, oh, no, before that. I'm sorry, guys, I missed a whole part. While they, while um, everything was going on, um, Jubilee and uh, Jubilee and um, Roberto, they were out. You know, they were out running from the crowd. Storm and Forge shows up. I forgot to tell y'all about that part. I, I don't know how I forgot that. Storm makes a miraculous and grand entrance with rain, thunder, like she always does. And Jubilee was so happy to see her, you know, she couldn't believe it. So now we're back at the mansion. All of this stuff I just told you I just happened. So downstairs, you get Forge, Storm. They tried to open the doors, but they fall apart. And Jean, you know, sees Storm. She comes over and they both, you know, embrace because Storm has been gone for a minute. Uh, for us, it's been like four episodes. But for them, it could be like maybe a couple of months. You know, she's been gone. Um, after that, you know, they, you know, uh, Forge and Beast, they, you know, embrace because they're old friends. So he's like, so what's going, you know, Storm asked, how bad was it? Because this is a sanctuary. This is our home. If it's bad here, how bad is it out there? So everybody gets into the uh, war, well, not the war room. But they get in, I guess it was the professor's, um, I guess it was his office. They get in there and Cyclops devise a plan. Everybody has to split up. So now that Cyclops and Storm are leaders, and I wish they would at least let us see when that took place, but I know it was, you know, um, they were strapped for time, so they couldn't really show us that. So Cyclops is the leader of the blue team and Storm is the leader of the gold team. And that's how it is in the comments. I didn't really know how that worked, but now I do. You know, after Storm lost her powers and she, you know, took command, you know, and Cyclops made her leader. And when he came back, you know, since they both were leaders, it wasn't like, you know, he couldn't, you know, she couldn't be stripped of it. So they made two, uh, two teams, gold and blue. So Storm is the command of the gold and Cyclops the command of the blue. Uh, so at this point, they're trying to devise a plan to take out Bastion and Magneto because they have two threats that is going on. And like I told y'all, there's two uh, comic stories going on all at once in the same, um, in the same episode. Magneto, uh, is the first threat. And so, uh, Cyclops, Rogue, Wolverine, uh, Nightcrawler. Jubilee, and I think Roberto, they were going with Cyclops, where Beast, Morph, Gene, Forge, uh, was going with Storm to neutralize um, Bastion. Uh, what I was about to say is, um, at this point, Rogue is not really even thinking, and she has on her new outfit. She has on her uh, new outfit, so at this point, she's not even really thinking. 
uh, Wolverine is like, why wait when we can, you know, just, you know, um, take the fight to him. We should just go ahead and, you know, do, you know, take him out. Uh, Charles come in at this point and says, look, we can, you know, if y'all want to blame somebody, blame me. Do not blame Magnus. So, uh, so he goes into telling them don't blame him. You know, blame, um, he blames himself for where they are now. Roberto basically, you know, calls him out and said, are you, you're the one that gave this, you know, your schooling students over to the man. So, and, you know, Cyclops was like, look, blame game is over, people. We got to, we have to do this. So, at this point, um, Forge and um, Beast, they're down in the, you know, um, in his lab working on um, something to neutralize his powers. So Storm comes in and says, impress me. So they basically tell, uh, tell her how it's supposed to work. And by the time they got to neutralize powers, she cracks some thunder. And <laughs> Beast was like, I guess we're going to be using that technology. Or oh, was it Forge? I think it was Forge that said that. So then um, Rogue is outside. Oh, I need to make this one uh, particular thing. They stress that the Earth would die in 12 hours. Storm already said she feels the Earth uh, magnet, uh, magnetic sphere is um, dying. She can feel it, you know, dissipating. So they have to stop Magneto at all costs. Um, Rogue is outside and, you know, Charles comes out and, you know, he, you know, was giving some good words about Gambit and was like, um, he think Gambit should have been buried on their you know on their grounds where rogue was like you know um if you would have looked at as looked the uh looked at us as more of humans instead of students maybe that would have you know maybe that would have saved him so by that time we see a huge asteroid so when i saw the asteroid i knew this was coming i knew this was coming and i was like oh no 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 I was like, this cannot be going down. So, Magneto comes out. All the X-Men show up. And uh, Charles tries to talk him out of it. Tell him to stand down. Look, too many people have died. And he was like, old friend, have you seen Genosha? Thousands died on Genosha. And he was like, can you convince me that it won't happen again? But your failed dream is what led to, you know, um, the destruction of Genosha. Then he talks about how Leech, you know, eyes had dissipated in front of him, were vaporized, basically. basically. And the other X-Men, you know, he goes to them and, you know, give a sermon like, you know, um, who, um, who wants to stand with me and, you know, um, preserve the future or stand with him and watch the Earth die? And uh, Charles was like, look, we're not gods. And Magneto said, well, gods have abandoned those. I don't know how he said it, but how he said it. Oh, my gosh. I don't know how Magneto said it, but it was, um, I can't remember. I can't remember. But anyway, so at this point, Rogue starts walking over to Magneto. Now, y'all got to remember, um, there was a time that uh, Rogue was a part of the Brotherhood. And Rogue was um, a part with Magneto. So it isn't that shocking. But when this happened right here, she was not with Magneto. She was not with him in this. But she was, but I guess they was like, you know, um, with the loss of Gambit, you know, she's feeling like, you know, there's no hope. And she did say, you know, um, she would not let any other mutants perish. So what happens is, um, she puts Gambit's jacket with Charles, and uh, Aurora was like, Rogue, don't, uh, she was like, Rogue, no, and she was like, uh, do not choose him, and she was like, girl, you was gone, who was there with us on uh, Genosha when thousands died? She was like, so who dies next? Jean, been there, done that. She was like, um... What, the, what does the... Oh, she said, and Morph was on the team 10, uh, 30 minutes before we even threw him to the wolves. She said, on Genosha, I made, a, uh, I made a vow that I would not see any more mutants die, and that's what I stand by. So she went and stood by 
Magneto. Well, she flew up by Magneto. So, and uh, Nightcrawler was like, no, 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 Rogue. I was like, no, Rogue, no. But y'all know, regardless of the fact, whatever team she's on, I still love her. Uh, Sun, well, Sunspot, which is Roberto, he started walking and Jubilee was like, no. He was like, look, my mother handed me over to those um, Sentinels and, you know, and they collared me. I'm not letting that happen to anyone again. And he was like, so who do I have left? And Jubilee was like, me. And by the time she he, she said that, he flared up and went and stood by Magneto. So Magneto said, look, the offer stands. You uh, The door is open. So he took the asteroid, Rogue and Sunspite, and they went on up into space. So at this point, all the X-Men have been teleported over to Genosha. I mean, not Genosha, but Mirror Island. Uh, I forgot Moira was, um, she had passed too because of all of the, what happened on Genosha. So, um, they, uh, so now they're trying to get everything prepared. Charles went and was talking to President, um, Kelly. And, you know, Kelly is like, you know, he's got to protect humans first. You know, they got to take out, they have to neutralize Magneto. But then he jumps on Charles like everybody else did giving him, you know, the reins of the X-Men and his dream, and they and he see where this is going. So, I mean, Charles was like, there's, you know, um, Eric is not really lashing out at you guys. He's lashing out at the problem that you guys don't accept him, and, you know, and this is, you know, oppression for him for many years. So, they don't get, they're at an impasse. So, you know, but he does, um, Charles does say, if you don't believe in me, believe in my X-Men. We can do this. So, the X-Men split up. Um, Cyclops team is going to uh, Asteroid M, where Storm team is going to neutralize Bastion. So, uh, let's get to Bastion first. After Cyclops and Gene hug and they get on their sh um, plane, um... They start getting to Genosha. I mean, not to Genosha. I don't even know. Are they on Genosha? They're somewhere in the jam tropics. So, they get there. Storm directs the team. She said Forge and her would, you know, keep the Sentinels, um, she would, they would keep the Sentinels, um, you know, occupied in the air while they get down and try to, you know, neutralize Bastion. So... Gene said, no, look, it's too dangerous. Look how many um they're there. And so Storm tells her about how she thought about Gene when she was away and how things would, you know, would be if um she didn't really, you know, if she didn't think about her. But she said, you know, we got to play our parts. And she even referenced that um how she saw when Gene died and came back as the Phoenix, how she rose and became stronger. So, everything was good, right? Now, they, you know, uh, once the uh, once Gene got all of them off the ship, I mean, off the plane, and, you know, they end up going to the ground, Storm and Forge just, start, well, she had a huge-ass tornado. It wasn't even an F5. This had to be an F9 tornado, how big this thing was. And she had lightning and everything, and I was like, yes, this is the storm that we know. So storm powers have, since she's gotten her powers back, they have grown immensely. Not saying that she couldn't do that before, but they have gotten even more powerful. So on the ground, Cable, um, oh, I forgot to tell y'all about the father and son time that Cable and Cyclops had. Um, he did, now they had a little small uh, father and son time. And, you know, Cable was like, you know, uh, Cyclops came in to talk to him, and he told him, "Look, um, if you you know, what did he say? Um, I forgot what Cable said to Cyclops, but he was like, I would rather have you, me, and Gene all somewhere on the beach somewhere.' And he was like, "She's not my mother," and he was like, "I know, but you know, it's confusing for me too because they're you know Madeline and Gene, because yeah, Madeline was the clone, but she's a part of Gene." So, he was like, yeah, it's confusing to me, too. And he was like, but, you know, even though she's not your mother, trust her. And he was like, 
so uh, so you're going to tell me to be careful? He was like, no, I'm going to tell you give him hell. And I like how they giving, uh, letting them use, cur you know, not strong cuss words like fuck, shit, and, you know, those two. But like an ass, they ain't. I ain't seen nobody say ass yet. But more like hell, damn. They give you know. I'm um, glad they're letting them use those a little bit. But uh, so Cyclops told him give him hell. So then um, going. So now we getting back to where they was doing on the ground. Morph Beast um, and Cable. They're walking off, but Jean gets the feeling that somebody's watching her, which it was sinister. Sinister ass is written so him and her have a battle and was uh she and I told I said this when I was watching they did not make Gene useless anymore because y'all know them Gene useless um memes have been running around oh um Bo May the Mayo said we ain't having her be useless she is about to be um useful she put up a damn good fight I was like man. She was going toe to toe with Sinister until he got, you know, got the best of her. And when he did, she ends up, you know, getting knocked into a bowling alley. I don't even know where the bowling alley came from because they asses was in. They got to be on Genosha. They have to be. So um, he comes in and he starts toying with her, saying, "I'm, I'm the only one that knows uh, when you, uh, when I switched you." I know when you end it and Madeline begins. Do, do you want to know? And I'm sitting here like, bro, why would you even do that? So, Jean said it doesn't matter because uh, Madeline is fighting with me today. So she hits him and knocks him into um, knocks him into one of the bowling alleys. And uh, when uh, she starts throwing, you know, um, bowling balls at him. So when uh, after the after he got knocked out the um, bowling alley, she goes down. Uh, she goes down to try to fight him. At this point, um, Storm and Forge are in the air. They're you know fighting, and after they destroy most of the Sentinels, Forge the airplane uh, Forge was in got um, hit. The, one of the engines got hit. So Storm tried to save him. She gets hit from behind and she not get knocked into the water. Excuse me. And Forge has to, um, he has to uh, land the plane as best he could, you know, crash landing or emergency landing, whichever one. Um, Beast and Morph go, you know, they finally got inside where, um, where Bastion was. And so Morph was, you know, disguised as, Sinister and told him that they had to retreat. Bastion saw right through that. He said, uh, know your place, mutant. He said, um, uh, for a snake like Sinister, he wouldn't care about nobody's life but he <laughs> I said that's that is so true. He wouldn't have came back for Bastion. So the collar that they had got uh, thrown down. Beast grabs it to go and try to, you know, put it onto Bastion. But remember, Bastion is hooked up to all these cables. He's hooked up to all this machinery, so he can't even move. He can move, but I think he's uh, I think he's trying to control all of them at once. So that's why he's con uh, you know um, hooked up to all the uh, sentinels. So he makes a uh, so he um, captures Beast with them. Uh, <clears throat> with the nanotechnology and makes a hand and uh, the collar drops in, well, he makes Beast drop the collar. After that, <clears throat> Beast, I uh, know, Sinister um, is, you know, toying with Gene again. When he was like, well, I was waiting for what, you know, I was waiting for something that you, uh, that you, uh, I don't know if he said you promised me or something that I always wanted. And Cable shows up, and Cable turns, and he ends up, um, he ends up looking at Jean, and they go, and they're going to, they're fighting. So she breaks his gun, and she tries to call out to him, but if you can see in the middle of um, Cable's forehead, um, you got uh, Sinister's um, crystal in, the, um, in his forehead, meaning that Sinister is controlling him. 
his powers are so I never knew what uh, what Cable's powers were. I know he I know he had telekinesis. I do know that, but I didn't know all the other powers he had. And when he unleashed his powers, they were so great that Jean could not even um, hold on. So at a split moment, she calls out the Cyclops. Cyclops sees what's going on. And she tells him, I love you. And, you know, she gets demolished. I don't know whether she survives or dies, but she gets demolished. So now let's get over to Asteroid M. Asteroid M, um, Wolf, um, is the, um, the X-Men shows up, the blue team. Rogue and, uh, Rogue and, uh, Sunspot goes to check out the X-Jet, but they're not there. So, um, Rogue was like, damn, if So, they teleport right in front of Magneto. Magneto wastes no time. Wolverine, uh, shoot this claws and they go, just go to fight him. Everybody just, you know, as, um, Wolverine is fighting, Rogue comes in and said, nah, sugar. I was like, I love to hear Lenore says, I love that. So, Sunspot uh, hits Jubilee. Jubilee hits him. Um, I forgot what Nightcrawler was doing. Um, but I know he was fighting, but I forget what he was doing. Cyclops was trying to, um, you know, uh, Charles was trying to talk to um, Magneto. Magneto not listening. So... Cycle, so, you know, uh, Charles was like, this is, he made me do this. And he said, I have no choice. He says, Scott, take off his helmet. I need to, you know, um, I need to get to his mind to try to, you know, get him to, you know, um, undo what he did to Earth. So, now, I think at this point is where I told y'all where Gene calls out to Scott. So, um, when uh, Wolverine got um, the helmet off, Professor uses his full max abilities, and I mean, it, I mean, he takes Magneto down. I was like, oh my gosh! I don't know what he did, but in the comic, it shows you and it tells you what um, Charles um, did to his mind. But at that point, I mean, you all you can see is just like, oh my gosh! And I can tell y'all with uh, with absolute certainty. That in season two, Onslaught is coming. I can tell y'all that. And I'm going to be ready to see season two. I cannot wait. So once that happened, Magneto falls to the ground. When he gets up, he goes ballistic. He said, you, he said, you finally done what you, uh, what you could not do. And he told him, he said, so now you have betrayed your kind. When he said that, he took every piece of metal he could. He done, uh, he done got all of them all strapped up and everything. He takes Charles, throw him to the side. Um, he gets his, um, he gets um, his helmet because Charles was trying to use his powers again. He threw that helmet onto Charles and tightened it, and um, he took the um, the controls out of Charles's wheelchair. And had him strapped in. At this point, I was like, man, it's about to get nasty. By the time I said that, all you see is Wolverine claws go through Magneto's chest. And everybody was like, no. They was like, they couldn't believe that Wolverine did that. He said, have you been in a lot of wars, wars, bub? He said... The brave always dies first. So Magneto was like, <laughs> he said, you just don't know what you did. So he said, so you want to fight? He resheats Wolverine Claws, threw him up against the wall, and you can start seeing the vein, you can start seeing the blood, um, but you can just see his veins just pop up all over his chest. When I saw that, I said, oh, no. I said, it's about to happen. By the time I said that, Magneto unleashed all of his magnetic uh, powers and stripped every piece of antimanium, I mean, adamantium, out of Wolverine's skeleton. It's not done. 
It is not done. That is what you see right here. That is what's happening. He pulled the metal out of Wolverine's body. And you know it was bonded to his skeleton. I was like, oh my gosh. I said, man. Guys, y'all need to come back here. The season finale is next Wednesday. You guys got to be here. I will be talking about it. Don't forget to check out my website. Guys, come back and see me. I love you all. I've got to go. And I will see you guys later.